In most towns and cities in Great Britain, men and women have come to know the meaning of aerial bombardment. During the raids of 1940 and 41, the enemy failed in his attempt to break our spirit and to destroy our power to make the weapons which eventually were to beat him. He failed because of the courage of the people of Britain and the determination of the civil defence services. But the civil defence services had something more than determination. They had a plan, a plan based on a simple pattern of action. From the scene of damage, information is sent into a control point. From the control point, help is ordered to the spot. Men and machines were there to clear the roads, rebuild the railway tracks, and to keep services and production going. More important still, there had to be a way of keeping our towns, the key centres of the community, alive and active. During the early part of a raid, the enemy usually drops showers of incendiary bombs to start fires as beacons for later bombers. Fire guards deal with them, and wardens report the incidents to their controls. The warden's field of battle is his own street. He knows it well, even to the number of people sleeping in each house. That's the Howards. Five of them there tonight. The warden reports the incident to his post on a written form. The Howards have got it. A direct hit. This information goes at once to a report centre. Air raid damage. Designation? C3J. C3J. Linden Road. The report centre collects information about incidents from all the warden's posts in its division. Five. Five. Trapped? Yes. Remarks? Contact Warden at junction of Linden Road and Cold Harbour Road. Message received. The information is sorted out and each incident is given a number. The bomb in Linden Road isn't the first they've had in Clifton Division tonight. Its position is plotted on a map, and an officer decides what services are needed. Rescue parties are wanted immediately to get out the trapped people. First aid and ambulance parties to attend to the wounded. He writes out an action message which goes across to the service depot. Rescue parties, first aid parties, ambulance parties and other services are standing by. Number seven! Hello. Where to, Bill? Linden Road. OK, Jack, bring it up. Right, next out. We are. An incident in Linden Road. Any roads, Bob? No, the route's clear. Here's yes. our key. OK, Bob. Yes, bye-bye. Bye. services report to him as they arrive. The other services had to come a roundabout way because a bomb blocked their road. The rescue party get on with the job of freeing the trapped people. is nearly clear. The warden in charge directs the ambulance to draw closer. At report centre, the disposition of the services is marked up on a board which shows which incidents they are attending in the division. Each division is self-supporting, but its activity must be coordinated with others. Everything it knows 
and every action it takes is therefore passed on to a control centre. Will you take an action message now, please? Occurrence number Clifton 13, one rescue party, one FAP, one ambulance. There are several divisions in a city like Bristol, each with its report centre and service depot. They all communicate with the control centre. At control centre, the messages give them a complete picture of the progress of the raid, showing just what's going on in every division of the city. The service parties at Incident Clifton 13 are plotted up. Clifton look like being busy tonight. They do. The plotters pass their messages on to the intelligence officer. He keeps an eye on matters of special importance and reports to the controller on the general trend of the raid so that he can direct reinforcements where necessary. How are things going? Are they getting anywhere near the docks? No, it looks as if it's coming mostly onto the shopping centre again. This is the background to the apparent chaos of an air raid. Amidst the crashing of bombs and the roaring of fires, the Civil Defence Army carries on with its plan of campaign. Back at Incident Clifton 13, one warden is posted to control traffic. Stretch a party! The first casualty has been got out. Bandage, broad knee bandage, mobilize the feet. As the casualty is a stretcher case, he will be taken off to a hospital. A sitting or walking case might go to a first aid post unless the hospital were nearer. reports this fresh incident. As well as doing high explosive damage, this bomb has started a fire. That must be reported first to the National Fire Service. Fire at Linden Road. Junction of Linden Road and Cold Harbour Road blocked by crater. Services proceed by Redland Hill. Then the report centre is informed of the new incident. There it's given its number, plotted up, Fire. Road. Junction of Linden Road. Blocked and Road. Road blocked and the officer writes out his action message. The service depots send out fresh parties. The new information is passed on to a control centre. The message comes into the map room. And here again, the fresh incident is plotted up. Bombs can do more than kill and injure people. They can put the whole machinery of a town out of action. At control centre, there are liaison officers of the various public utilities. Water is important and comes first. H.E. bomb, fire. Water, gas, electricity and telephones damage. Blocked roads, Junction of Linden Road and Cold Harbour Road by crater. Message ends. Any bomb crater may fracture the mains of the various services. Therefore, such damage is reported to the control room of each concern. Water, gas, electricity, telephones damaged. Linden Road blocked by crater. End of message. Blocked roads are a menace to all the services. They make it difficult to get about quickly, especially at night. Water, gas, electricity, and telephones damaged. Roads blocked. End of message. Occurrence number CL27. Junction of Linden Road and Cold Harbour Road. HE bomb, fire. Water, gas, electricity, and telephones damaged. Linden Road blocked by crater. 
End of message. Sergeant, 78E. Time now, 0120 hours. The control center is thus linked to all controls who have charge of the city's affairs. Read your message, received 017 hours. The following main roads are blocked. Bedminster District, Bath Road, UXB, approximately 50 yards. The control rooms, particularly police and fire controls, operate much as does control centre. Another fire pump fire. Fire pump fire, Queen's Road. Fire pump fire, Queen's Road. Subdivision two are getting empty. They must be taking a thousand tonight. We'll support them from subs one and three. They can send five pumps each. Send this message to sub one. Order five pumps to sub two. And the same again to sub three. Subdivision three. This is division here. Order five major pumps to subdivision two. Time of origin, 0145. My initials are VP and yours. Thank you. When one area is hard pressed in a blitz, reinforcements are sent from other areas less heavily engaged to build up its strength. One, order five major pumps to subdivision two. Time of origin 0145. My initials. Civil defense is planned to be mobile like this throughout its network. From each part, from report centers and through them from warden's posts, the control rooms get a complete picture of the enemy's attack. They plan to meet it. A big incident needs control on the spot. The incident officer is a specially trained policeman or warden. At any serious affair, such an officer is posted with his distinguishing flag and lamp. Report center, incident officer, Victoria Street speaking. Fire now endangering Johnson's warehouse. Assistance urgently required to remove... Storage. This important message goes through to control center. This thing at Clifton doesn't look too good. The incident officer there reports fire threatening Johnson's warehouse. That's full of some kind of food, isn't it? Yes. Let's look. Uh, find out if the incident officer thinks reinforcements are likely to be wanted. And let the food officer know. We'll give him something to think about. I'll have a word with the region. You've got your hands rather full. The control room is the nerve center of a city's civil defenses. Vital information is passed swiftly on to all the authorities concerned. Switch on the emergency lighting. Are you hurt? No, it's only a scratch. Telephones are out of order. Sit still, mind those damn message forms. Are you all right, messenger? Quite all right, sir. Then run with this to the nearest warden's post. Right, sir. One of the outposts of the Civil Defence Army will send the controller's message. Good Lord. Central Control has got one. Post H3 Central speaking. Address to Regional Control. The Civil Defence Plan has to be resilient, capable of adjusting itself to the lightning attacks of modern warfare. ALP Control hit and out of action. Alternative Control will be taking over as soon as possible. Stop. Behind the control centre of each town and city is the Regional Control Room directing operations for the region. In this case, the whole of the southwest of England. The regional control for this area happens to be near Bristol. Oh, hell. Bristol control's gone, that's calamity. Price, I'm going to order reinforcements in. Miss Watts, send these messages to Somerset and... Is that the message room? I have a message for you from Regional Control Bristol. Immediate priority. Text of the message. Somerset will send to Bristol two first aid parties 
Is that the message room? We have a message for you. Address from Regional Control Bristol. Immediate priority. Text a message. Send to Bristol. Two first aid parties. Two ambulances. From the outlying towns and villages, reinforcements move in. Central Control speaking. Address to Regional Control. Text of message. Alternative control taken over as from 0230 hours. Stop. All services heavily engaged. Bristol is not lost because its control centre is out of action. There is an alternative control centre, always kept manned by a skeleton staff, and they can take over at any time. The region have got reinforcements already on their way. They were called 15 minutes ago. Good. We shall need them. Now get on to rest centre control and see if they have any trouble getting their rest centres open. Rest centres have to be got ready to receive people made homeless by the bombs. They will be opened as soon as the raid is over and people can leave their shelter. Meanwhile, all the people who have to look after a town services are kept busy. For example, gas mains may be set alight. The gas company's engineers sometimes put them out by flooding a section of the main. The bombers have flown away, but the damage they've done is still to be made good. The doctors and staff at the first aid posts are busy getting the lightly injured casualties attended to and made comfortable. They send the serious cases on to the hospital. Early the next morning, the rest centres are busy, caring for people who have no friends or relatives to go to, people who have lost their homes and those evacuated because of unexploded bombs. Some of them have been rescued from their bombed houses and they were smothered in dirt when they came in. But now they've cleaned themselves up a bit. I was sitting in the kitchen when a bomb fell, the house collapsed, I lost all my clothes and money. I hope you will like this house. It will fix you up for the moment anyway. Thank you very much. Sometimes people are rescued in their night clothes. These women have only got what they stand up in. So they are given clothes, or clothes coupons, to replace those they have lost. On the broader scale, the same matters are being discussed and decisions reached in the emergency committee. Can you tell us about the present position, please? The general position as regards electricity is that about one third of the city is without current. The trunk main, supply under docks, at Avonmouth, is badly damaged. The electricity engineer will tell you more details about this. Yes, Mr. Chairman. The 33,000 volt cable supplying Avonmouth docks has been damaged by HE. It's a six hour job to get the cable into service again. Men have been working on it since daybreak. And, we should and that's another problem. People who have to go on working for long hours on important work need refreshment. Civil Defence plans for mobile canteens to bring food and drink to the people on the job. All the fires are now under control. Damping down of major fires continue. Fractured water mains have made it necessary to operate a number of relays from the river and reserve dams. The men have put in long spells of duty and we've sent out the mobile canteens. It has already been reported <coughs> that many of our water mains have been fractured. As a result, about a quarter of the city are without their pipe supplies. It will probably be about 48 hours before the supply is something like normal again. The military are already helping the city engineer with uh, demolition and clearing debris. <laughs> for the use of military water carts for a day or two to supplement our own emergency water carts. This will considerably ease the situation. With regard to gas supplies, Mr Chairman, the gas company's engineer will report on the position. Well, sir, <clears throat> we have suffered no major damage to the production plant, but we have lost one gas holder. Water and gas mains have often been fractured in the same bomb crater, and many of the low-lying mains have been flooded. 
once the mains have been repaired, it will be fairly easy to draw off the water through the condensate pots. We have a good supply of mechanical pumps for this purpose. Mr Chairman, I have just received another casualty list. Uh, there are a further 17 killed and 32 wounded. I think it's unlikely that this list will increase. Uh, the, most of the trapped cases have been recovered, but search is still going on. Bombs throw the life of the town into chaos, and people want help and answers to all sorts of questions. There are information centers for this. They house under one roof somebody from each organization which exists to help the victims of an air raid. If you want to find a missing relative, or if you don't know how to get a last ration book replaced, you go to an information center. Nowadays, we need not only people, but machines to fight a war. The electrical engineers have just finished testing the high voltage cable before putting it into service. Number four, main to the docks, ready for service. Right, old puss. Current is through to the docks. Civil Defence keeps our factories and docks going through the air raids. Factories for munitions, docks to unload vital cargoes. This is the plan of Civil Defence. Day and night, all over the country, the posts are manned. The Civil Defence Army is ready to go into action at a moment's notice. Sometimes they're just waiting without the stimulus of vital work. But that's all part of the job and they stick at it. Civil defense has been tempered through battle. When Hitler bombed our towns and villages, he came up against a spirit he'd never bargained for. From it, we have gained a new way of living together, and we have fashioned a keen weapon of war. Britain is the advanced base of the Allied nations in the West. Our civil defense army has the task of defending it, and is ready.